Fucking up hundreds, just count out the numbers. I gave one direction, now all I need's for us. Just an anomaly fitting the norm, but I might go boom and keep with a storm. Oh, that's fine. Oh, that's fine. What's up, guys? Welcome to Awkward Situations, the series where we talk about things that are going on in your life as well as things that are going on in my life. And I have two situations to talk about today because you guys left some great comments on my last Awkward Situations video. I'm going to try to upload these about once a week every Sunday, Monday, Saturday time. So look for this video on those days and leave your great comments below. The song that played at the start was from my friend Cyrus. He just released an album called We Should Just Enjoy Ourselves. It's amazing. That's actually my favorite song off the album right now. My favorite song might change, but right now it's Bomb. That's the one I put on the intro. I've linked the video for that in the description, as well as the Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, all that stuff. All of those links below for the album, We Should Just Enjoy Ourselves. It's a really great album. I'm really digging his style, and I'm very proud of him. Support local artists. That's what I'm all about, and I'm just happy that a friend is doing well and making good music. So now we will get into the awkward situation, the very first one. Let's do it. Today's first awkward situation says, Longer time viewer, first time commenting. Me and this girl from school have been talking. She's really nice and fucking hot. We always flirt with each other, and we had a great last Friday watching a football game. I couldn't play in because I broke my knee in a game two weeks ago after they got the W. We went to a friend's house to party. I told someone there that I would fuck the shit out of her. This Monday, that dude told her. Now she is pissed. I may seem like a total douchebag, I assume is what that word is supposed to be. Must be an autocorrect issue, but I really like her, and she told me today she really likes me, but she was hurt by me saying this. Please like so he sees. I have to say that's one of my favorite scenes from Romeo and Juliet, one of the greatest fictional romances of all time, when she's saying, Romeo, oh Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? He's actually in the back with his boy Bartholomew saying, hey, you see Juliet? I'm gonna fuck this shit out of her. <laughs> I don't think this guy actually needs advice. It's just kind of a low point in their relationship that may turn out to be a relationship. I think they're gonna be in a relationship since they both seem to like each other. But it might just be something you don't tell the kids if you do have kids one day and they say, hey, how, what was your opening line to mom? How did you get her to be in a relationship with you? And the dad has to be like, yeah, I said that I'm going to fuck the shit out of her and I did that. You're proof. So that is, you know, something you're just going to have to edit for the kids if you have them, which you probably won't because it's a younger relationship. And you might meet other people in your life, but hey, just good luck with all of that. Anyways. I wanted to say that I have many identities in my life, as you all do. I act differently around my wife, and I act differently around my friends, I act differently around my family, and I act differently around my wife's family. I'm sure you all do the same. If you've seen my videos, I'm sure you know that I can get pretty vulgar, but I don't act that way around my family, I don't act that way around my wife. I can be really open around my family and be very honest around my wife. I'm the same way. That's when I'm my most true self, when I'm around my parents and my brothers and sisters and when I'm around my wife. But when I'm around my guy friends, when I'm around, it's different. So my guy friends online, I'm pretty honest with because, I don't know, I just met them as I was older, closer to an adult. You're more open and honest with most people. You kind of phase people out of your life that you wouldn't have in your life if you how would I explain this? In high school, you're forced to be with people. I don't have to see certain people now that I'm an adult. I don't really have to be anywhere. So if I'm going somewhere to see someone, I actually care about them. If I'm in Eco 201 with Dave, who I fucking hate, but he sits next to me, I'm gonna have to deal with Dave. I might even have to act like I'm Dave's friend. Maybe I have to sit at a lunch table with six people I like and three people who I absolutely hate. Like I just sit down and I see Brian walking towards me with his tray of chicken nuggets and mashed potatoes and I say, God damn it, Brian's coming. Oh, Brian's gonna say something stupid. Then Brian just sits down at the table and he's like, Yo, I got so fucking hammered last weekend. Let me tell you guys what happened. And everyone has to sit there and be like, Yeah, cool. Cool, Brian. In my high school, we had three lunches in the schedule. A lunch, B lunch, and C lunch. Whatever lunch you would go to was determined by your class schedule. So you don't get to choose what lunch you're going to. It's predetermined. This one trimester, I had a lunch with a guy who I was pretty close friends with. And then there were a bunch of other dudes who sat at our table that I didn't really enjoy. The topics of drugs and sex came up a lot. I was pretty square in high school. I mean, I still am. It's not like I'm sitting in my room doing coke before I play Battlefield 1. I prefer ecstasy. No, I don't really like drugs. But uh, we were at the table and the topics of drugs and sex came up a lot, which I didn't have a lot to contribute to that conversation. So I was very quiet during lunch. But if I did have to contribute to the conversation, I would obviously talk a lot different than I would otherwise. If we were talking about females, you got to discuss it like, 
yo, yeah, she's fucking hot. Yo, that, that chick, that fucking fat ass. But if you're around a woman who you like, you would say, my, you're very beautiful. I find you attractive and I love your mind more than your body. It's funny how you act differently. The true self is somewhere in between, right? Like I said, I am my truest self around my wife and around my family. I'll act more vulgar online around my wife's family. I'll act very, very conservative. I, If they ask me if I've read any great books lately, I say, well, there's this one called The Bible that you should check out. No, I'm not that conservative, but I just kind of clam up because I don't want to give them the wrong impression. And I think a lot about the words I say nowadays and who will see the words I say or who will hear the words I say. That's something that we've been criticized for. And when I say we, I mean myself and my friends who I post YouTube videos with. We've been criticized for becoming too politically correct or thinking about what we say too much. And I know that I think about what I say more nowadays because how could you not in this culture on the internet and on YouTube in particular where people want to quote unquote expose people people get upset really easily it seems like and I think it's just more important than ever to consider what you are saying and who you are saying it to that's my little lesson for you guys my little dad talk it's something I think about constantly and I think this gentleman learned that lesson. Today's second awkward situation is about politics. There were a few comments about politics, but I feel I can relate all of them to this situation. Hey, Joel, I have an awkward situation. As the presidential election is coming up and lots of family is coming over too, how do I avoid slash stop arguments from starting throughout the family? They all have very passionate and different opinions as well as I'm sure politics is going to be brought up. An argument has happened before about politics and it didn't end well. I didn't want the same to happen. What should I do? Please help Joel. First of all, I will say to anyone watching this video that has a family or will have a family someday, please do not be a fucking lunatic around your family. Do not indoctrinate them. I mean, raise your family how you want to, but how insane is that? That people can have these blow up arguments for just having different opinions. And I have people in my family that do not talk to each other anymore because they have different political viewpoints. That is so insane. Believe what you wanna believe, but to really push your views on someone else or push your views on your children to this point of tension that is so stupid is one of the worst things you can do as a family, in my opinion. That being said, we do have some members of our family who are extremely conservative, and we have some extremely liberal members of our family, and that's always fun at Thanksgiving when uh, someone says, hey, Cheryl, can you pass the turkey leg, and why do you think it's okay to kill babies? That's never happened, but it would be very uncomfortable if that did happen. I consider myself to be pretty neutral in terms of politics, maybe slightly left-leaning, and I view my family as neutral. Like I said, we don't really talk that much about politics, or when we do talk about politics, we talk about it from the standpoint of being able to see both sides of the issues, which I think is very important. And when we're hanging with large groups of family, it's usually mostly just conservative. There's more conservative members of my family, I would say. Growing up in Michigan, there's a lot of rural areas in Michigan and a lot of conservative pockets around Michigan, not really too many big cities. So that's what I have more of in my family. I have some really liberal people in my family too, but those groups normally aren't together at the same time, and I've never seen a blow-up argument like that. So like I said, your family situation seems unique, and I understand that these are really charged political times. It's crazy. One of the other situations said, I am able to vote and I have no idea who to vote for, which isn't really an awkward situation. But just to kind of go away from this family thing really quickly, I should say that it is important to vote. I believe it's important to vote. I know some people don't believe that only a third of the country votes in the general election. But there's a representative that I'm excited to vote for in Michigan, a local representative that actually cares about things that are going on in my city, because it's that person's job to care. And I want to vote for that representative. You can find things on the ballot that are exciting. The presidential election is the thing that is talked about the most in the news. But do you think that Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton gives a fuck about Des Moines, Iowa or Concord, California or Austin, Texas or these random fucking cities? You know who is supposed to care about those cities? 
your state representatives or your congressmen are supposed to care about your state. There's other things on the ballot besides the presidential election to vote for. And it's very important to vote for those things because if you're of a younger age and your generation has viewpoints that you want to get across, here's a very important one for me. I care a lot about net neutrality and making sure that cable companies aren't coming in and setting different prices for internet speeds, all of this bullshit that a lot of senators and a lot of congressmen are trying to support because they're of an older generation. They don't understand the impact of what they're doing. They don't care about the impact of what they're doing because they will be dead soon. And they are getting paid by these mega corporations who benefit the most from things like this. That's something I care deeply about. And I vote based on those opinions. If you care about something, Voting is the only way in this country that you are able to express that opinion in a legal manner. People who say, it's all bullshit, man, it's all rigged, who cares, are just lazy to me. I think that there are some very rigged things in the American system, but just sitting around and complaining, what does that do? I, I mean, it really does nothing. Just at least make some type of effort. I encourage anyone who is of age to vote to vote. If you don't, I understand it's also your right to not vote. But I encourage everyone I know to vote. There's always something on the ballot that I find that I am glad I voted for. It's usually not even the president. And I can tell you I am not excited to vote in this presidential election. I really hate both of my options. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. But I am definitely excited to vote for this one representative that I found on the ballot. Try to find something on the ballot you're excited for, even if you're in a really partisan state like Texas. It, I don't know. There's maybe a ballot measure you can find. I'm sorry this video is so long, but to get back to the family thing, if your family has these arguments and you feel really uncomfortable, I would just try to avoid your family as much as possible. It's good to hear these arguments and know that you don't ever want to be a person that does this. So you just soak in the cringe and realize that this is so dumb. I never want to be like this when I grow up. And it's good to hear that people talk like that and know how they sound out loud because they probably don't even realize how they sound out loud. They sound like fucking maniacs. So I would just avoid them. I played a lot of video games in the basement during family gatherings. So you might want to do that because sitting and listening to an argument about politics or religion is akin to watching two people punch separate brick walls. The argument is not going to change the other person's opinion. You can have argument about nuanced ideas in politics, maybe certain policies. Somebody could argue for a policy that would change my mind. But if someone wants to try to argue against my core political or religious values, I don't care. I, like, I don't care what that person thinks. That's their belief. I have my beliefs. It's a big waste of time. You might as well be talking to a wall. So... I don't know what to do, man. Just during these political times, everyone, please stay sane. I know that the political process in the United States is the country coming apart and voting for both of their sides, and then the country is supposed to be put back together after the election, and we all come together to work for the greater good, but it feels like that coming apart is more of a permanent process as of late than just a political process. So... I don't know what to say about the future. Who knows, guys? I'm sorry this video was so long. Thanks again for the great Awkward Situations. I look forward to seeing you all again next week on Awkward Situations. Have a great day.